Welcome to the Inspiring Coaches Show, the podcast devoted to inspiring coaches to bring their professional dreams to life by revealing the knowledge, insights, and best practices of other inspiring coaches. I'm your host, Jen Anderson, PCC, early settler of the coaching industry, lover of all things coaching, and what coaching is doing to make the world a better place. Well, hello out there and welcome to the Inspiring Coaches Show. And as you know, we start every episode with an inspiring celebration from a coaching colleague. And our celebration this week comes from life coach Joni Meehan. And Joni says, I recently had a client say that she has learned more about herself through working with me for three sessions than she has learned in therapy with her counselor for the last six months. I explained that coaching complements counseling because therapy makes you aware of what you need to do in your life and coaching supports you in doing it. Well, yay, Joni, it's always really nice to hear from clients that you're being effective working with them. So wonderful job out there. And I want to invite all of you listeners to send in a two to three sentence celebration from your own work as a coach in the world. Each episode, I'll share one or two of your celebrations as yet another way to inspire our listeners. So please email me your celebration keeping in mind is always the imperative for confidentiality and coaching. You can email it to jennifer at coachingoutofthebox.com. Well, today our guest coach is Susan Murley, PCC. Susan helps leaders and entrepreneurs break through limiting beliefs and build successful careers. With a decade of experience running her own private practice as a professional coach, professional certified coach through the ICF and leadership trainer in Waterloo, Ontario. She knows what it takes to create a thriving business. She understands that strategy, focus, and self-awareness are fueled by a growth mindset. Susan leverages her education as a credentialed coach, a seasoned entrepreneur, and a registered psychotherapist to help her clients overcome their doubts, find their motivation, and tackle their biggest obstacles. Susan has helped hundreds of clients find their way forward to actioning transformative outcomes. Today, Susan is ready to chat with me about what has most recently been inspiring her within the world of coaching, namely helping coaches start and grow their coaching practices. And to get you centered on her topic, Susan has provided us with a quote from John Wooden, who is the former UCLA men's college basketball coach and 10-time national champion. Success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best to become the best you were capable of becoming. Well, while you are pondering that bit of wisdom, we'll take a quick break to hear from our inspiring sponsor, and then we'll be right back with Susan Murley. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. You may be wondering why start your own coaching business. Well, one of the key benefits of starting a coaching business is that it allows you to help others succeed. You can help your clients set and achieve their goals, learn new skills, and make positive changes in their lives. This can be an extremely rewarding experience. It can help you build relationships of trust with your clients and help you feel more fulfilled in your work. Owning your own coaching business is a great way to do what you love, to be able to choose your clients and set your own rates and work where and when you want. When you start your own coaching business, you have more potential for work-life balance and you can work on your own terms. So this means that you can choose the work that you want to take on and set your own hours. You're in charge of your own business. You have control over your life and your work schedule. Another benefit of starting a coaching business is that it's often quite profitable and there's lots of demand for coaching services. This makes coaching a great business opportunity for aspiring entrepreneurs like you. Owning your own business can be a great way to ensure that you can secure your future and that you're able to take more control of your destiny. 
It's an empowering feeling when you're more in control and are more certain about the path you want to take in your life. It's time to put yourself in the driver's seat and take that next important step in your career journey. You've got this and we're here to help. Okay, we're back. And as a quick reminder, today we're talking about what our guest, Susan Murley, sees as the best ways for coaches to start and grow their coaching practices. Really what inspired her to create this. So hi, Susan, thank you for joining me. Hi, Jen, it's a delight to be here with you today. Yes. And you know, every time we interact, I'm always inspired by you. You're just, you have such a beautiful presence. Um, so yeah. So thank you. I'm looking forward to playing and, and growing alongside you as we explore this topic, which I think is near and dear to a lot of coaches hearts. Well, I hope so. It's one that's top of mind for me, especially right now. Yes, I can. I can see that. Um, so you have a passion for helping coaches to be successful and really build and grow their business. What would you say tipped the scales for you that helped you decide you wanted to create an actual program around this? I was getting requests, increasingly so, particularly in the last couple of years. And it's surprising that even through COVID, we were still seeing individuals who had gone through coaching accreditation wanting to either start a side hustle or a full-time business as a coach and seeing the potential in it. Coaching is, is an industry that has been growing exponentially. It is a multi-billion dollar business for coaches. There's room for coaches to have, whether it's a full-time business or a side hustle to be able to pursue this. And I started to get a lot more requests and I thought, you know what, let's aggregate it into a program and pull all of the insights and all the things that I wish someone would have told me to navigate into a course. And so that's what motivated me to take this next step. Oh my goodness. Okay. So it is interesting because, you know, I got started 25 years ago in building my business. And there, it, I, I always say it was kind of like the wild, wild west. You know, we were just out there and we did our thing. And there was a lot of emphasis on creativity and building your own programs and, and finding that niche. And there was a lot of education that went into it back then. How do you think it's different now? I I think it's still, I wouldn't say it's so much the wild, wild west. I think there are some fabulous programs like the International Coaching Group, Inter Coaching Out of the Box has for accreditation and that there is so much more rigor in becoming accredited as a coach. And so with that, I'm seeing a lot more individuals in leadership roles. So internal to corporations, organizations, enjoying thriving through the coaching work they're doing leader as coach and then wanting to do more of it in on the side for themselves or even pursuing it as a career because they fall in love with coaching which is exactly what I did back in 2010 and I had been in a in a senior leadership role really enjoying coaching my staff working with them and thinking I just love this and it's been a, a love affair ever since then okay so the difference I'm hearing there a little bit is when I first got started, it wasn't as big in corporate. I mean, it wasn't in corporate really. I mean, there was leadership coaching and, you know, coaching, except it was more life coaching. And actually we called it personal coaching back then. Um, and it was most, most of the people I encountered, it was full-time. Like they had just like said, pivot, I am doing this. Um, so I'm hearing that, that leaders within organizations are, who are learning coaching skills and even at times, how to be a coach, not just use a coach approach. They're falling in love. They're saying, I want to do this for myself as well, whether it's a side hustle or full time. It sounds like that's the difference you just described. It is. And while the term is still life coaching, the umbrella term is still life coaching. There's so much more, as you say, you know, you niche into a certain area. And you're right. There is much more of an emphasis now in organizations for leader as coach. So we're seeing a number of leaders want to take that coach approach style to how they're interacting, how they're giving feedback, how they're motivating their teams, how they're bringing empathy into conversations. Because I think there has been a lot more pressure to do things differently and to really dial up that coach approach. So they learn these skills, they see how much it's transformative both in their professional life and in their personal life, and they want to create a ripple effect. 
Um, and that is, I think some people really latch onto it and they see it because of that leadership scenario that they're dealing with. And then they want to build it into something else for themselves once they take training. Mm -hmm. The other trend I feel like I'm seeing more and more of is people within organizations who decided to go ahead and get certified on their own. That's like not even necessarily connected with their organization, not sponsored by their organization. And they, they just feel drawn to it, get the training. And then they say, wow, what if I build a program within my company? I'm wondering if you've been able to play in that realm can speak to a little bit about that. Or I don't know. We didn't talk about that. So I'm not sure. No, I certainly can. I see both. I see some individuals and my own experience was I just felt the calling to pursue coaching. So I looked for, for it on my own and felt like now I see a lot more organizations bringing it into the workplace or looking for external coaches that can train on some of those skills with leaders, mm. whether it's group dynamic workshops, and then it's where you're building the skills from there. So I think there's still a combination couple of streams that people are coming, uh, you know, from which they're coming at it. But overall, seeing such an increase in the language of coaching and so much more sophistication in those mm. coaches who are coming for training and then wanting to expand it in whatever form that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you're, you're kind of just all on board with wherever someone is. Meet them where they're at. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know that about you because I've, I've had, uh, we, I actually took a class with you and I know that you are really adept at meeting people's needs in the moment. Um, it's one of your, your superpowers. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Um, so what do you think are some of the most pressing challenges that coaches face as they're launching a business or a practice? I I think it's still, and that's a, an amazing question. I think it's still around mindset. And the, so the whole psychology of starting something on your own and where can you get support? Can you do it? It's one thing to, to do some coaching, you know, just whether you're practicing it, doing it in the workplace, but to be able to actually launch something for yourself requires a, a real belief and a, a mindset of abundance or a growth mindset, like Dr. Carol Dweck has talked about, like really, it might not be something you know how to do yet. You're stretching yourself outside of your comfort zone. And the brain doesn't like uncertainty. <laughs> it can almost feel like a bit of a threat. It's a scary place to be. And so that to me is probably the number one thing that coaches who want to start launch their business are encountering is the psychological aspects of can they do it? They might be experiencing some imposter syndrome, feeling like, who am I to be able to do this? And will I be successful? So having the infrastructure of a program, a course that is tailored to navigate uh, around the challenges that other coaches like myself have experienced, here's what not to do, here's something <laughs> to consider. And again, coming from that place of abundance and really addressing that psychological piece and mindset is super important. And the other piece of that, I would say, is making sure that you have a good support network, including having a mentor coach, mm. having, having people you can go to, your trusted advisors, your trusted coach, to be able to talk about those challenges and around mindset that can can play at us right and cause us to be procrastinate in some cases oh oh absolutely you know it's such an interesting thing you're inspiring within me right now which is about 10 12 years ago i invested heavily in a marketing program that was designed to build a business where I was networking with other coaches and we were supporting each other to provide unique services. Each of us have our own unique services, right? And what I really took away from that uh, experience was, <clears throat> first of all, that's actually a two to three year commitment to see the money that they're promising you. And I think it's really important for people to know that it, one year is not necessarily going to get you. It depends on where you start with a network, but it's probably two to three years before you'll really see the big payday they're talking about if you if you see it. But what they were really focusing on was the psychology of your client, what it takes to, I don't know, I'm going to say convince someone <laughs> to come in and be coached by you. What I hear you talking about is the psychology of the coach in that mindset. Very much so. I think that there is a space, everyone can benefit from coaching 
they might not necessarily be in a place of readiness for it in the moment when the coach is available mm -hmm. <laughs> for them. But there is, again, I'm going to come back to the term abundance. There are so many people who are looking for coaches and it's around making sure that there's a good fit for both. Mm -hmm. And if coach is coming in with the mindset of, I don't think I can do this, or who am I to be able to do this? It's important to do that personal groundwork and really focusing on making sure they're, that you that they're feeling confident and good and dealing with some of those, I've called them like negative automatic thoughts and rely on the support of a mentor coach, get some input, get some feedback and make sure that they're well positioned to be able to bring the energy and the motivation and just the uh, sense of uh, enthusiasm and optimism that others are looking for when they're seeking out a coach. And that's, I think, a real, um, it can be a deal maker as opposed mm. to a deal breaker. Well, oh, yeah. Energy and motivation. I mean, fun words to be considering in starting your own business, right? I mean, <clears throat> I just, I, I see your enthusiasm. I think that might even be the, the third word you used, <laughs> but, but it's, it's a real shift from a lot of people who, oh my gosh, I really want to do this work. And I'm terrified too. And they call, they call it selling themselves. That's what I hear most often is I don't want to sell myself. And that's a whole different conversation, right? That's a, something that a mentor coach can spot. Right? Yes, absolutely. And I don't think it's about selling themselves. It's around really being curious, mm -hmm. not gentle to quote Ted Lasso, <laughs> I'm a huge being curious and Walt Whitman, that's his quote. The idea that People have pinch points. They have problems that they're dealing with. They have obstacles that they may be struggling to face on their own. And with the coach, they can co-create solutions. And that coach can be there to ask those discovery questions, the evoking awareness questions, those that bring that curiosity. That's exactly what their client needs. There's no selling required at that point. It's being there to say, I'm going to be your confidential strategic thinking partner, be here in the moment for you. And actively listen. We're going to co-create solutions and you're going to be able to shift your mindset, dear client, to have a transformative experience. Mm -hmm. and that is a real uh, mindset shift, I think, for people who, especially people who've never had their own gig, their own side hustle or whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> um, to kind of take the, the spotlight off themselves and put it on, on the client and really be there for the client. There's another piece of this, Jen, that I think is really important. And what I would say that I wish someone would have told me sooner. Oh, which... I was just going to ask you that question. What do you wish you knew when you got started? <laughs> it's really imagining your ideal day as a coach and developing a persona for your target, like your ideal client, and then being able to focus on what that looks like, really feel the emotion of it and niche really niche where you want to work. And I didn't do that right away. So we talked earlier about having that, you know, that umbrella term of being a life coach. I am an executive coach. I specialize in a specific market and I, I did a lot of groundwork. And so we'll look at this in the, the program that we're launching in the new year, which is really around what's, what are your core values? What's really important to you? What's your sense of purpose? What's your, what I call the North Star? How do you navigate toward those values so that you can filter out what you don't want to do so that you can make space for what you are driven to do, what is really deep inside you? Because that's when motivation happens. Mm, so I just heard the phrase success from the inside out. Yes. As you said, that that's really your approach. That's what inspires you. Success from the inside out. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Oh, I can see it on your face. Absolutely. <laughs> so soon. I'm curious, what is your next stretch as a coach? My next stretch as a coach is to launch this program. I mean, we're getting ready to pilot it and start it in the new year and just really excited to share this journey with other coaches who are looking to expand into whether it's a side hustle for themselves and just try it, you know, on the side, or if they really want to launch a full coaching business and move into this as a, as their full-time career. And so this is something it's again, for me, it's heart-centered work, success from the inside and being able to share a step-by-step -step process in order to be able to do that. So that's the next part of this journey is really aggregating all that content, sharing it with coaches who are in a place of readiness to take that next step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was something you said I wanted to ask you about it. 
Oh, you use the word uh, or phrase heart centered. And, and so I'm just kind of curious, what is that? How is that word inspiring for you since you used it? Yes, heart centered is it feels right with my with my core values, with my North Star, what is truly important and what can create a ripple effect to change the world in a positive way. So it's big, it's very aspirational in terms of what we can do. Because I believe that the more coaches that we have in the world, they're more they're doing work to help others shift their mindset, overcome obstacles, be better leaders, be better, feel reach attain their highest potential. We're going to we're going to change the narrative on how people show up with their confidence, their self esteem, and every aspect of their life. Mm, mm. You know, Susan, I have to say that um, you know I engage with a lot of coaches, you know, through this podcast, but also just in my day to day work. And <clears throat> um, there's there's conversations about how maybe people are getting trained in coaching and and they're not necessarily there because they're called to it or they've dreamt of it or this is something that they're just compelled to do but I'm listening to you and I'm thinking you're tapping into a whole other mindset a whole other segment of the the coach the people who are getting trained as coaches that population what what inspires you most about those people when I see people getting it and believing in themselves and leaning into their strengths what is bringing them joy in their day. And I call almost like glimmer moments Mm. and having these coaching exchanges and they have these aha moments as a coach to recognize that they're taking what they're learning, they're bringing it into a coaching exchange and they're seeing the results of it. And that for me is so inspirational. I love Mm. that experience. Yeah. They're walking their talk. I mean, I think that's the phrase. Right? I always get that confused, but like you're, you feel it in you. You talk about it, and then you are it. Right? Beautiful, 100%. beautiful transformation. Well, I'm excited to learn more about the program. Um, so, how can coaches find you if they want to connect with you personally? They can connect with me at authenticaconsulting.com, and that's with the K. Uh, authentic is spelled a little differently. Or Susan D at authenticaconsulting.com and also at susanettecoachingofthebox.com at the International Coaching Group. I can be accessed at either location. Okay, go ahead and spell authentica all all the way out in case a lot of people are just going to be listening to this. A-U-T-H-E-N-T-I-K-A. So authenticaconsulting.com. Okay. Good. I'm glad because I want them to be able to find you. Um, So we're going to take a quick break. Can you hang out for just a minute, Susan? Absolutely. Okay, good. So when we come back, I'll share with everyone how you can apply to be a guest on the Inspiring Coaches Show. On behalf of all of us here at the International Coaching Group, we thank you for joining us today. Have you been thinking about becoming an ICF certified coach? Reach out to an enrollment coach and ask about our fast track to ICF credential. We would welcome the opportunity to support your coaching education journey from beginning to certification and beyond. Remember, every journey begins with a single step, so take the leap. Become an ICF certified coach. Your ACC credential is waiting for you. All right, so I promised to let you know how you can apply to be a guest because we're always looking for inspiring guests like Susan. And if you're interested in joining me on the show, please send an email to jennifer at coachingoutofbox.com. Include your topic idea and a short blurb on how you think it will inspire coaches to bring their professional dreams to life. Well, as always, I love to express gratitude because inspired coaches always express gratitude. So Susan, thank you so much for being here today as our guest. It was an absolute pleasure. Always enjoy talking to you, Jen. Thank you. Well, you too. It's a, a definitely a lovely connection that I feel with you. So I'm looking forward to what, however we decide to play next. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so thank you to our sponsor, which is the International Coaching Group. And most of all, thank you to you, dear coach, who is listening in for committing yourself to constantly seeking inspiration to bring your coaching dreams to life. Until next time, I'm Jen Anderson, and this is the Inspiring Coaches Show. Mm -hmm.